Welcome, my beautiful souls. Um, today we are going to do a reading for Scorpio. Um, really, it's going to be for anyone who's intuitively guided to the reading. Um, as some of you know, not everyone, if you're new, I've been taking like somewhat of a mental break from YouTube. And what I mean is like putting out a ton of videos, um, though I enjoy it thoroughly. Um, something is telling me just to be more selective. And so I'm waiting until like certain signs or specific type of readings call to me. And um, Scorpio, you're calling. You are calling and I'm going to answer. Um, and it's interesting because I feel like I've been doing a lot of Scorpio readings lately. Um, but maybe you just like you needed it, you know what I mean? Like you just needed that little extra help. Um, so if nothing else, I hope I can supply that. This, by the way, is going to be for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Um, like I said, many of you will be intuitively to the reading. Um, I feel like your guides will just find a way to get it in front of you. Even if you ignore it, something's going to be like, I feel like there's a seed just planted that you'll go back and listen to it. And I feel like that's with anybody's reading, not just mine. Um, though I, I do suppose it depends how they read. Anyway, what was I going to say? Um, you could be in love with the Scorpio and same thing. Just know your guides, know you're here. I definitely feel like it's a good thing to ask your guides, you know, until you really feel strong within your own intuition and you're watching a reading, um, especially if you watch a lot of readings, you got to really learn to trust your own intuition above all. Uh, so this is, I think, a great time to ask your spirit guides, like, you know, if this reading is for me, let me know through some type of confirmation, you know, something that just like you can't doubt it. Um, there could be certain messages or it could be a whole reading. Um, I have to feel like, you know, like I'm telling a story, but I feel like there's a lot of different avenues off the story. You know, what I mean, like. And then I don't know, in the middle is the big melting pot of all of us. So anyways, um, I remember the last reading I did for you, and I felt like it started hard, but then I felt like it got easier and easier. So I feel like energy was lifting for you. Doesn't mean things are easy yet. Um, but anyways, some reason that I'm like, I'm recalling that. So Maybe this is going to be like a continuation of that one. Uh, so anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this reading. We are going to use a few different decks here. We're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom, of course. We're going to use the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. And deep we go. That's why our reading is long, because we do go deep. Um... And, you know, I get I'm not everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. Like, I'm okay with that. But here, at this table, we go deep. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help but go deep. So, um, for the main spread, I'm going to use the Universal Tro, which, um, not a normal deck I use for you, but it was calling to me. I did bring out the Romance Angels in case love comes up and we want more clarity. And I am going to use the Major Arcanas. Wow, it's like a grocery list. Um, I use these like bullet points. As I've been saying in the other readings, you know, really, I feel like my readings are the different levels. Like Mother Mary is level one. This is level two. Level three, the main spread, the entree. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like every deck we add in gives us another level. Um, maybe even a deeper perspective. So anyways, I use these um, kind of like a bullet point, but 
many times they tell their own little story. All right. I feel like the readings lately have been very spiritual. And, of course, I am always open to that. I would say, listen with your spiritual ears. <laughs> you know, to me, that means like, let's say it's something I need to face. You know, it's a truth. No matter what I tell myself, a truth is a truth is a truth. Uh, and I feel like sometimes it's just easier to face it. So I don't know. Maybe someone is dealing with that. And the truth is the truth. All right. Mother Mary. Many of you know I have a lot of Scorpio love in my life. My beautiful daughter. My, I was going to say... My son, interesting, my brother, my younger brother, um, you guys would just love both of them. Okay, well, that's half the day. We have self-respect. I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down. Self-respect. I honor and love myself through my healthful actions. I love and honor myself through my healthful actions. Self-respect. You know, it's making me feel like, like, you know, I don't know. I feel like just for no reason at all, like maybe I'm going out to eat and I decide to like really like do it up. Like I do my hair, I do my makeup, I wear like a cool outfit. You know what I mean? I don't know why I'm picking this up, but I feel like, um, Maybe giving, you know, and, and I feel like Scorpio women, um, first of all, I feel like Scorpio women are just beautiful, um, but they just have natural grace. You have this natural poise and beauty to you. So sometimes I have to say, like, all of a sudden I'm feeling even the opposite. Like if I'm someone who like always wears makeup, um, like always maybe has my hair like pinned up. This may be a good time to like put your hair down, like tussled, tousled hair um, and like barely any makeup. You know what I mean? Like, because for some reason I'm thinking, well, that's sexy. That's sexy too. So anyway, I don't know why I'm picking that up, but. And then we have patience. You know, I just knew this was going to come out because it was taking so long to get the cards. And I thought to myself, well, patience, I have to have patience. Um, but I felt this energy. This is very much like temperance to me. I trust in divine timing. I trust in divine timing. So something's happening. Right? Something's happening. Maybe I want it to happen sooner versus later. And maybe, you know, it is about, like, the right time. You know, this unicorn, it's like he's, he's surrounded by this gate. Right? But 
if he just merely stood up, he could just like really walk right, hop right over it. But, you know, to me, it's the energy of like knowing because he doesn't seem like, okay, whenever the right time is the right time. There's like no anxiety. I don't know. Okay. We're going to go ahead and give the Major Arcanas a couple shuffles. Yeah, Capricorn just jumped out. High Priestess, but we're not aching them yet. Um, though I do want to say, I feel like short little messages, like just to trust your intuition as it relates to any decisions you're making. Yeah, you know, it's almost like if something sounds too good to be true, chances are it is. Um, you know, or someone <clears throat> presents themselves as, you know, again, it's it's coming back to truth, your truth, and trusting in that truth. All right, but again, something is happening. And it's happening in divine timing. So that's a good thing. Um, did I cut these? Can't remember if I did, so it doesn't hurt to do it again. All right. Layer number two or level. All right, so then you when they came face out or face out, face up is the world, the next chapter. You know, interesting because trusting in divine timing and then the world really is the perfect energy because in the world's energy, it does signify like some type of new chapter opening up. It just may be like this is divine timing. But I feel like in the world's energy, this is really where your spirituality is alive. Probably why I keep talking about your truth. You know, we saw the high priestess um, earlier. So, you know, that's your intuition, your higher self. So, new chapters opening up. Oh, we got four cards we have well hello full perfect energy to take on what the world asks of us you know what i mean it's about you know when we look back just extracting the wisdom the lessons that we've learned um they don't have to be complicated like sometimes love just simply, I know what I don't want. <laughs> that I know. Um, but the fool's like, you know, but I leave the anger or, or you know, anything. The fool's very light and free going. Uh, they're free. Doesn't mean like, you know, my, my life is perfect. Just means that, you know, the things that I can't control, number one, I'm giving up, I'm letting go of. But again, the fool, the one who, you know, more than anybody else is willing to take that leap of faith. I also feel like, um, there could be some some difficult energies you've been dealing with that I feel like, you know, in time, I feel like you're just going to forget about them. Like, it's almost like amnesia takes over. Um, and that may be what I was talking about earlier, where, you know, some of the things that we worry, that I think I said in this reading, um, I don't know. I feel like it's like learning really what's important, what's not important. 
So anyways, and then we have judgment. Wow. Okay, so this is divine timing. Every energy speaks of that. Um, the fool's like, I'm listening. Judgment is your spiritual team. They're calling you to the present moment. So if my focus has been on the past, time to, you know, close that chapter. Okay, I learned what I learned. It is what it is, you know, um, on to the next. Judgment speaks about a rebirth for this fool. So, you know, and I love that, like, judgment is, like, right behind the fool. As the fool heads towards the world, you know, I head towards the portal. There's my spiritual team right there, like, guiding me. Then we have the Hierophant. Excuse me. Hierophant. That's your faith. Your beliefs. It's funny, the Hierophant is looking out to the future. Everyone else is looking back at this world energy. But the Hierophant is mirroring the world. So, you know. When I talk about what feels like a spiritual time opening up in your life, definitely, you know, it's like, I don't know. I feel like your faith is stronger than it's ever been. Um, it's like a new you. That's what it feels like. Like, it's time for a new you. Um, but, like, the new you feels like the old you. You know, but anyways, I love how your guides are like right there. I also like the Hierophant. You know, you have a lot of um, light, beautiful, spiritual, faith driven energy here. And the full, like, absorbing all that, right? So, you know, as I take a leap of faith, it maybe doesn't feel that scary because I feel like you have so much support around you, like spiritual support. And this does feel like divine timing in action. You know what I mean? Like, here we go. This is it. It's time. It's like the Hierophant is blessing the future. Like saying a blessing for you and the future. And it's like you know, it's like the path is blessed before you even walk down it. Mm. And I feel like that's meant to be like a sense of comfort. But also it feels, you know, but also truth. But to comfort you, you know, if, it, you know, I have no energy of worry. So, I don't know why I'm putting it there. Um, hmm. Let's bring in the Universal Tarot and let's just go deeper. Let's figure out where we're going here. I mean, it's such a blessed feels so blessed. All right. Judgment again. Under the world. Eight of swords. So it could be something that you were resisting.
It could be something that you maybe were afraid to take a leap of faith in. Um, Eight of Swords is a self-created prison. And there's only one person who can uncreate that, and that's you, the person who created it. You know, it's building up walls, um, being afraid to take chances. And it's it's really based on previous energy. That's why the fool is so important here. Because the fool is like, you know, letting go of what down the road just really won't matter anyway. The judgment right beside that. Like, got to be aware. You know, divine timing could certainly be waiting on someone to uncreate this Eight of Swords. It's like some change that you may, like, be refusing, but you're refusing it for... You know, what doesn't feel like truth. Look at this. Your major arcana. Dun, 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 dun. Death card. Transformation. It's like, it doesn't matter how we look at this. It's like your guys are like, it's, it's going to happen one way or the other. Um, you know, death card is about transformation. It is about a closing of doors. Uh, but it is so that new doors can open. You know, the world is a new door. You know, a new chapter. Doesn't have to mean all areas of your life. But I feel like in this type of energy, it's certainly, you know, it may be good for one part of my life. But I feel like it will be good eventually for all parts of my life. But I may not know that until I actually close the door. Though, I feel like I do know what I know, what I know, even if I don't want to believe what I know. So, th it feels like there's a little resistance to the closing of a door. Allowing yourself to have this transformation. That didn't take long. Look at that, the sun. The illuminator. You know, almost like it's saying, there's nothing to fear here. There's nothing to fear. You know, on the other side of that door lies the sun. It's your illuminator. You know, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm either in energy where I could be feeling a little stressed out or, you know, not trusting within myself for some reason. Um, I do feel like for some reason I may be resisting some type of change, but it feels like it's within me now. I mean, it can be about other people, but these would be things that you couldn't control. So don't carry that energy around. You know, the sun will, you know, the sun illuminates all. Our path. You know, no shadows can hide when the sun comes out. But it also illuminates us. You know, if there's anything that we may need to look at, you know, and I feel like that's what it's doing. But I feel like it's it's showing you there is nothing to fear on the other side of this transformation. 
you know, it's interesting because you have judgment here twice, right? Rebirth, rebirth, now, present moment, the full present moment, right now, new beginning, the world, the next chapter, right? And then, you know, trust in divine timing. Well, I feel like divine timing is waiting on you. You know, it's interesting because Leo is, or the sun is Leo's ruler. And um, this is my my son Steve's sign, Leo, and my daughter Scorpio. So I don't know, when I see them together, I always feel like she's being guided, especially being mirrored by judgment, like part of her spiritual team. It's almost like you're holding back a part of yourself that is just naturally you. And I don't know, it doesn't feel like there's a need to. We have the King of Pentacles, can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be. He's under judgment and under the world. And he's got a big pentacle in his hand. See, offering like opportunity. Look at this, soulmates. Hmm, interesting. Interesting that soulmates is mirroring the full, number one. He keeps talking about a rebirth. So, you know, the soulmates could certainly be having a rebirth. Um, but I feel like with the Eight of Swords here, that would leave one of these soulmates probably in a no position. How do you know that you know this, though? Seven of Cups, trying to make a decision. So you're trying to decide whether to close this door. I would say the only fear with that is if you're in the Eight of Swords energy, you know, she's got a blindfold on. But then again, it's really inner truth. You know, it's like, how does it make you feel? may talk about like you meet someone and it probably does feel good but then you know who knows maybe you freak out Hmm, look at this, the two of wands. To me, that's you saying yes. So I feel like, I feel like you're being asked to consider <clears throat> at least setting yourself free from the Eight of Swords, let's say, or closing a door to whatever or whoever just really just isn't fulfilling you you know what i mean quite the opposite probably you're not doing 
like as well as you could be doing um you know what i mean because i feel like like real soulmates help lift each other up you know they don't block each other's opportunities where i feel like you know there could have been that type of energy um so i feel like first and foremost it's about you like freeing yourself freeing your mind from what was you know what i mean and maybe like how i was saying you know about like kind of like purging right but sometimes we got to purge our thoughts You know, it looks like love's going to happen here. We have the two of cups. And then we have the only other two is two of wands. And to me, that is movement forward. And in between these two twos is you making a decision. You know, and I feel like the sun is here to help illuminate this for you. Um, it doesn't feel like something old. Now, I'm not going to say these soulmates, like, haven't been together before, because they are soulmates. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they just know each other, you know, eternally. Um... And then I feel like I may have been in a period of time where I was confusing, like, soulmates with just... Like, maybe, like, someone who is there to teach me a lesson, you know, and probably me, them. And maybe I thought they were a soulmate. I also feel like there's different levels. My ears ringing right now. All right, well, we have the Eight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. That's good. To me, that means your focus is really like on your money, your creativity. Um, and I feel like that's a good place to put your focus. For sure. And, you know, the Eight of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles under that. I feel like that's you right now. Like you're strengthening your own foundation. You know, you're working on like your finances, your careers, your foundation, making it better. Um, and I feel like you will. You know, maybe you don't want to be distracted. You know, with love. But I don't, still don't think that stops it. By the way, I don't know, this King of Pentacles to me, he almost feels like he's an, like it's an opportunity. All right, well, let's bring in the Gilded Let's give him a shuffle. So it was a soulmate's mirroring the fool with the eight of swords in between. I could see this being previous lives. You know, like death, rebirth, death and rebirth. Could see that. Yeah, 
We have the Seven of Wands. We have, interesting, the Eight of Wands. From the Seven of Wands to the Eight of Wands. And then we have the King of Wands. Look at all the Wands, first of all. Holy Wands. You know, Seven of Wands does speak about standing your ground. Um, it can be, you know, defending off attacks, so to speak. Uh, but this energy seems to be heading towards this king. So any defensive energy seems to be heading towards him. This, this may be someone of the past, because this may be someone who... Um, and it could have been like a lot of ego involved. Um, but they may, like, just what you went through may have you, like, kind of tied up in knots, so to speak. Like, I don't want to repeat that. And I'm not going to say there wasn't passion, but I feel like there was fighting. Um... So this definitely feels like someone of the past to me. All right. I must get this feeling of, you know, if this is something that like takes an aggressive type turn or is like just a lot of fighting and a lot of ego and you know that may be what i want to consider like is that the way i want to live or you know will it change i don't feel like it it will uh it's almost like two Two energies that just don't seem to mesh. So I don't feel like this is meant to be repeated. Unless it's a lesson. Look at this. Ace of Cups. Okay. Can't deny love now. You know, it's coming over the death card and also judgment. And this is what you're making a decision about within the Seven of Cups. This cup. You may be meeting someone and maybe you don't even realize that there could be past energy that's still attached to you. Um, that... Let me put it this way. You know, it's funny. Sam and I, like, when we go somewhere, like, I know him so well. Even though, I mean, really, we haven't been together that long. We, I mean, we date as teenagers, but I know his soul. <clears throat> and I know how kind he is. Um, I wouldn't be with him otherwise. But it's interesting because... When we go into a room, his attention is almost domineering, where other people are like either back away, um, like he goes in hot, you know, if there's like we had a conversation with the doctor, and he went in hot. And the doctor left the room for a second. I'm like, you know, you can't always be that like that. You got to sometimes, I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Um, why am I talking about this? Well, I feel like I feel like his energy could be misread. Though again, is he not projecting that energy? 
And that's kind of what I'm feeling, I think, with the King of Wands, like someone who projects that type of energy. You know, I kind of feel like they feel like they think they're the world. But are they? So I don't feel like the Ace of Cups is them. Just saying. I don't feel like that because I feel like this is energy that, I, first of all, I feel like for most of you, I don't feel like you're even together, but I feel like the energy still affects you. You know, um, or you don't know that until like you're presented like with this love down here. I was like, whoa. And I feel like that's why the two of wands is showing up, you know, because it's not a fear based energy. It's like, I'm going to take a chance. There's the full like, you know being asked to take this leap of faith. Two of Wands to me is like the full answering that. Like, yes. We have the moon over the sun. Feminine over the masculine. Um, Card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer, your neighbor. Interesting, you and Cancer both have your rolling sign out. The moon can talk about uncertainties. You know, it's like, I can only see as far as the moonlight allows me to see, but the sun is like underneath that. So, it's almost like saying... What you can trust is if there's anything done in the dark, especially when you're in a state of awareness, and I don't mean like like paying attention to what someone does every minute of the day. I don't mean that. I mean like you yourself are just aware. You're living in the present moment. Um, you're enjoying the journey. Then the moon really becomes dreamy energy. So, you know. We have the death card again. Over the king of pentacles. Interesting. We have the Nine of Pentacles over Soulmates, over the Two of Cups. Look at this. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Over the Seven of Cups, we have Justice, Card of Libra, Balance, Cutting of Ties, that is the Closing of Doors. I love the progression here. And then, by the way, we have the Five of Wands. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You know, it, it seems like clear to me that there's energy of the past that has a potential affecting your decisions moving forward. But here's the thing. I feel like there's there's like, first of all, I love that the Nine of Pentacles is coming over the soulmates because the Nine of Pentacles is telling me we, we take, go from the Eight of Pentacles, where this is you going into something. This is you, like your interest is peaked enough that you decide to follow it. 
And listen, you can follow it to success because I feel like that's what it's talking about. And what else I love about the Eight of Pentacles is you don't need to know everything there is you think you need to know. It's really you're learning it as you go and becoming comfortable with that, becoming comfortable with yourself. And I feel like, can you have success? The answer is yes. You know, this is independent success. This is you. This isn't about you and someone else. This is you feeling strong within yourself. You know, if there's anybody out there who is like telling you, you can't, you won't. They just didn't know what they were talking about or they didn't want to see you do well. You needed to, you needed to want it yourself. I feel like that's what the eights are really talking about, self. Like, this is what I needed. Like, you know, like I needed to go after these goals, chase the, you know, these things that piqued my interest. Um, Cut out, you know, the fat. Instead of spending my life fighting and, you know, connecting with someone who's got all this ego, you know, and listen, I can't always cut the ties, but I can cut the energy. And that's really what justice is about. It's like using the shield of justice, right? Using the sword and cutting the ties that have left you in an unbalanced state to now a balanced state. Justice is about making you whole again. That's really its ultimate promise. Um, but I also love how we're going from the Nine of Pentacles where you yourself feel strong. Um, and, you know, it really talks about reaping the benefits of your actions. You know, if you're working hard towards something, then I feel like you're going to see those benefits. If you're hardly working, then you may hardly see anything. But if you, you know, because it really is the effort you put behind it, but it does tell you that, you know, success can be yours, especially if it's like self or um, self-employment. But what else I love is the Nine of Pentacles is here, right? So I'm feeling good, I'm feeling pretty strong. I, I cut out the fat of what was. Again, maybe this king is like somehow an opportunity shows. And that may help you like even increase what you're doing even more. It's almost like once you cut out the fat, everything then just starts moving and like energy starts flowing your way. But I like how, again, you're in this independent nature. Um, I feel like the only thing you got to worry about, because this is Carter Virgo, is like, don't overthink. Instead, just allow yourself to experience, because that moves into the Ten of Pentacles, like, right away. And what's connecting them is the Ace. So this could be single, falling in love, moving into the Ten of Pentacles. And Ten of Pentacles, to me... Maybe because I'm an earth sign, it's really like the house I want to see. To me, it's about loyalty. It's about trust. It's about abundance. Um, some of you, it can be a love of even working from home. But I also feel like it's talking about love for you. And you for another, by the way. You know, this isn't a one-way street. This just feels like kind of feels like, you know, again, we opened the reading with you, with Mother Mary asking you to trust in divine timing. And I feel like anything that feels like it takes away your self-respect, that may be what you want to look at. Because I feel like the more, you know, maybe there are a couple doors that you're closing. And when I say you're closing these doors, it means you're allowing yourself to have this transformation. It's saying I'm not willing to, like, accept less than. 
anymore. Why am I doing that? You know, this is my life. You know, I was given this one life to live. Why am I giving it away? You know, and if you really believe in spirituality, then you know that things can happen that feels like magic. And it's not magic. It's just divine timing. I have to feel like the I feel like the the most important thing I've learned through doing tarot and my spirituality growing is that we walk hand in hand with our spiritual team on this earth. We're not alone. We have all this guidance that's available to us. Um, they're with us when we're down. They're with us when we're up. They're they're helping us to guide. You know, helping us to, sh- to they're helping to show us the way. We don't always receive that. Doesn't mean we always follow that. You know, we're born imperfect, but we ourselves are spiritual beings. And I feel like when we remember that, like, wait a minute, I'm a spiritual being. Um, my soul, I'm the intellect of my soul. And I'm having human experiences. So really it's about my soul expanding. So if there's lessons, I want to learn them. It's almost like I want to be the brightest star out there. And I feel like you have the ability to be. All right. Definitely say this is a time not to get caught up in other people's dramas. Look at that. The two of cups over the two of cups. Look at that. Well, that's divine timing, my dears. Wow. Eye to eye. We have the Nine of Swords. Interesting. There's worry. It's unnecessary worry. You know, will that transfer into a relationship? It will. Um, Because sometimes that's the energy of like, like suffering in silence. So I'm not really telling someone else, you know, that it's not that I don't want you. I'm just fearful. And I feel like it's better to be honest and truthful and let it out because I I don't feel like there's a reason for this. Again, that feels like old energy. And it's just natural for fear to pop up its ugly head when something good happens. But this really does speak about unnecessary fear. Maybe you're fearful of like making the actual decision. How do I know? Well, if you allowed yourself to have these transformations that I feel are valuable available to you, and that just means to me like these transformations are lifting your own spirit then I feel like naturally, you know, those with a lighter spirit come towards you and you towards them. I feel like it's just natural. It's naturally what you attract. You know, if I'm in this fighting and ego and drama type energy, man, don't I just keep attracting more of that to me? But when I realize that, make whatever changes you feel are necessary, you know, and bring your energy to the current moment so that you can have these rebirths. You know, they're here for you. 
you can say no. You know, it looks to me like financially, that's just growing and growing. So I feel like there's no problems with that. It, you know, just trust within like what you're receiving, because again, um, I feel like you're being guided, but I feel like it's look at that eight, nine, ten of pentacles right in a row. It's like success, I feel, will be yours. So whether you accept the love or not, it doesn't negate the um, abundance I feel you're receiving. Look at this, the Knight of Pentacles, your guardian angel, like, hello. You know, the Knight of Pentacles, first of all, teaches us patience. It's a slow-moving night, but it moves slow with purpose. It's sometimes waiting on us. This night tells you I come at the right time. And when I come in, you know it's the right time. But I don't come before my time. I don't come after my time. I come at the right time. You're being guided here. And, you know, it almost like, it almost, almost feels like, can I have it all? I feel like the answer is yes, you can. Um, but I do feel like th it's important that you believe that. You know, you put that trust behind you. And, you know, do you be you? This type of love, I feel like it, there's nothing you need to change about you. Even if you still feel a little broken from what was, I still feel like, you know, this type of soulmate, it feels very soothing to me. So I feel like that helps soothe you and probably you them. And now we have the Knight of Pentacles literally coming in to the reading as kind of the last card. To me, that means it's the right time. And I love that it's coming over the two of wands because you're agreeing with it. I don't feel like the Knight of Pentacles is a one-time thing, by the way. You know, this knight says, I bring you into Pentacle, and this Pentacle is truly meant to enhance your life. And, you know, financially, I can see your life like, wow improving quite a bit and even in your love life um though you know it's like i want you to be ready at the same time but at the same time i feel like this may be a little hard to deny especially with your guardian angel on the other side of fear like mm, you don't need that here All right, let's take a couple romance angels. Give them a cut. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Make the effort. Codependency. Addictions are affecting your, your romantic life. 
I feel like that's tied to this back here. And then past life relationships. You know, it's interesting because when it said that someone from your past is returning, the first thing that popped in my head was a past life. Past life love. And you've been getting that for a while. So it's happening. You know, there could be something that you do to help you, like, overcome, like, maybe have a glass of wine. Um, but but what I wonder is, and then maybe I have two, and then maybe I have three. Does it not then cause me more anxiety? Um, and it's just a question I have. Like, you know, can it, does it cause me more anxiety? Um, and I feel like that may be something you just want to question yourself. But, and I also feel like there may be a, a time in your life where, you know, you could have felt like addicted to someone. But yet, the energy just doesn't seem like it worked out. But quite the opposite. It feels like a lot of ego-based type energy, um, drama-filled, and that doesn't feel right. You know, not for you. So I feel like just take take this leap of faith and see where it takes you. You know, keep creating. Your efforts are paying off. But it's also talking about love. Will you or won't you? You know, the ball's always in your court. But you have beautiful divine energy wrapped all around this. It's like a big spiritual hug. So it just feels like something is, it's just the right time. And I love how the nine of pentacles came up first because I feel like it's you feeling good about you first and foremost. And that feels good. And when you feel like that, first of all, then you'll look at love in a different way. Like, okay, so I have my life together now. Do I really want to invite love in? Um, and I feel like, you know, again, go with your gut. Maybe give it a chance. Maybe go on a date. See where it goes. See if there is this recognition. Because I do feel like there will be a soul recognition probably pretty quickly you know, comfort level. Um, you'll probably talk for hours and hours and hours. Like now I'm starting to get a picture of it and it just feels very romantic. Um, but I feel like the journey is, like I don't want to miss the journey of it. So even starting at a two, that feels like the perfect place to start. Especially if you have any fear. Again, with the sun here, it's literally telling you, with the, especially with the Ace of Cups touching it, if there's anything done in the dark, it will come to the light. But I feel like you're going to know that first. I mean, your spiritual team wants you to have this. Your soul probably planted this seed. But now will your human self allow it? We shall see. To be continued. That's where your comments come in, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm, I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, you know, it just feels like a rebirth in your life. And, again, it doesn't have to mean every area of your life. But I feel like eventually it affects every area of your life in a very positive way. You know, I see the the hardship in the reading, but what I really see is the beauty and the what can be and the you creating, you know, and finding this true abundance and the right opportunities 
And then I feel like love just comes in and door and it's just the way it is, you know? Just the way it is. And, but it feels like, and it's the right time. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I love you guys. Um, I thank you for just allowing me to do these special little readings. I like doing them this way because it's like, if I really feel called to a sign, then I'll do that reading. I know I've done a lot of readings for you lately, but I felt really called to you today. So um, I'm just trusting my intuition and letting that be. So... Whoever needed to hear it, I hope it helps. I hope it helps bring you clarity. Um, really believe in yourself is what I really hope. But, um, again, your comments will definitely let me know. And your comments really help others, too. So, thank you for that. And thank you for all the ways you help support this channel. It means the world to me. I love you guys. Um, truly. I love you. So, I wish... I wish all this joy and happiness and love and abundance find you and it finds you soon. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.